just been... I just feel the presence of God really strong in this room now. And, and I'm just, just not saying that because I don't do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, just thinking about that, you know, that earthquake that just hit. I'm not like trying to be superstitious or any kind of freaky thing, but I'm going to tell you this. The epicenter of that earthquake we just checked is right here in San Bernardino. Man. And I... I and sometimes you want, what you want to do is take the prophetic meaning of stuff like that and just realize that there was a time that there was some worship happening in a prison. Yeah. 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 And they tried to chain up some believers and told them to shut up or else we'll put you in a dungeon. You could, you could arrests us you could threaten us you could put us in the dungeon but you can't arrest our God and our praise so the scripture says that while they were in in these chains and cuffs in a, at midnight in a dark dungeon they get together and say, look, they're trying to shut us up. Because they, they can't stop from singing. And we know this, where a few people begin to sing, God inhabits, he starts filling that place with his presence. And, and I'm telling you, right now, we don't need another church service. We don't need, come on, we don't need some more entertainment. We need the presence of God to set us free. Come on, there's somebody in here that you're in a dungeon of suicide. You're in a dungeon of pain. You're in a dungeon of God is saying, I'm you're in your darkest room. If you could just acknowledge me, I'll invade your space and I'll set you free. The scripture says that while they were singing, an earthquake hit that prison. While they were singing, an earthquake hit that prison. And this is what happened. When the presence of God enters a room, he puts things in order the way they're supposed to be. He does what you can't do. This is what it means. You can't set yourself free from the prison of depression you're in. You can't set yourself free from the addiction that you're in. You can't set yourself free from the destructive cycles you're in. You can't set yourself free, come on, from the pain and the abuse that you've gone through. But then there's a God that will invade your space. And he, where the Bible says, with the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. And he says, let's put things in order. Let's put things in order. And what God is saying tonight, I'm gonna begin to put things in order in your life. All you gotta do is seek my presence. I need to get your kids in order. I need to get your marriage in order. I need to get your emotions in order. I need to get priorities in order. Now, he invades the space. And when he invades that, that prison, with just a few Christians, two Christians singing, the Bible says the earthquake hits and every single prison door opens up. Bam, 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 bam. You know why? Because in heaven, there is no bondage. In heaven, come on, in heaven, no one is chained up. In heaven, come on, there's nobody addicted. And when the presence of God invaded that prison cell, it began to put everything in order the way it is in heaven thy kingdom come that will be done on earth the way it is in heaven all the chains fell off too like just think about this earthquake hits all the doors open bam 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 then all the chains fall off of every single prisoner too unlock 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 and you know what was crazy not one of the prison doors stayed shut and not one of the chains remain because when see when god does a work he does a complete work somebody needs to get ready for a real move of god in your life when the prison guard saw it 
it was his job to keep everything in order and everybody's outside their cells celebrating their freedom. That prison guard back in those days, if you let your prisoners go free, you lose them, you have to kill yourself. So he was ready to kill himself. And then, and then the ones that started the earthquake, the worshipers, the apostles, they, did, they say, hey, 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 you don't have to kill yourself. Nobody left. We're all here. Just count them. See, because when you're free, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. You're not trying to run anymore. See, what they realized, not only did I, come on, they not just got a physical freedom, they got a spiritual freedom. And even in that dungeon, it felt a lot better than any place they could be. And they were saying, we don't want to leave this place right now because we're feeling some peace we've never experienced. We're feeling some, come on, some freedom we've never experienced. We're experiencing some joy we've never experienced. And say, I'm not leaving here because to leave here is a downgrade. Come on, give God some praise. What you need? It's the presence of God. We got to get, get this in our spirit. You know why we go from place to place, from thing to thing, the thing to thing, the, 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 from relationship to relationship? You're, you have no peace. And I, and I don't care if you go to a vacation on Hawaii, staying in a on a yacht on part of the time that's a million, $20 million yacht. I guarantee this, if you don't have the Lord, you have no peace. But there's somebody that's living in a little apartment with a half a sofa. All they got is some tortillas and some refried beans in a can. They're not in Hawaii. They don't have the money, but they've got something inside of them that, that come on, the money can't buy. And they're saying, man, I'm feeling good right now. I wouldn't change a thing in my life. This stuff's real, man. All I'm saying is taste and see that the Lord is good. Allegra, that song was awesome. I felt the anointing on it. Wasn't that beautiful? And... And you don't understand that every time that you try to do something that's greater than you've ever done, it'll be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. You know, so for them to even create this song, and, and I know they got six, six songs that are ready to release. They got another six songs that they're working on right now. They'll have 12 songs, and they're going into the studio right now to write another album that's, that we're going to take into the streets. So it's going to go, it's going to be an inner city album. So we go into the streets and there'll be anthems for the streets. It's going to be amazing. But to do that is hard. The warfare, the resistance. And remember this, the greatest, you have an enemy, the devil for sure. But and then you have another enemy that's probably even greater than the devil. And it's your present happens and your present self. And in order for you to do what you've never done, you're going to have to die to the present person you are today. Stop trying to save the present you. Get rid of that person so the new you can resurrect. Come on, someone, someone needs a new you. Come on, stop trying to protect yourself. I don't want to change. You got to change. Because if you don't change, there's going to be no change. Come on, your family has to change. Your marriage has to change. Your circumstance has to change. But stop trying to fix the outside. God, it says if I could change you and I could transform you, I could transform anything that's attached to you. Is there anybody in these next three days that you're saying, I don't want to be the same person that I, that I was on Wednesday night. By the time I go to Friday night and I go to Sunday morning, I want to have a new me. A new me. I, the old me is dead. And I'm ready to do what I've never done through the power of God. Does anybody want some change in your life? Remember, big change in your life must happen. This is the only way it happens. You got to change big. How crazy that you're living a, a life that that's no purpose. You find yourself depressed. Everything you're touching is not working. You're waking up in the morning and you don't want to wake up. <laughs> you're thinking, man, let me just go back to bed. I got nothing excited to look forward to. And the crazy thing is, 
trying to hold on to that. And then Jesus says, I've come to give you life in abundance. And whoever calls upon me, I'm not going to judge them, but I'm going to save them. And I'm going to make them whole. And I'm going to set them free. And I'm going to give them purpose. Come on. Is there anybody here that that's already happened to you? Give God some praise because he's worthy. He's worthy. Come on. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Father, start right now. This is a prophetic time. Right now you're doing it. We thank you. This is an epicenter that's happening now. Father God, there's some true worshipers in your house. May Father God, it begin here and go throughout the world. Give God one more praise. Come on. Let's shake hell. Let's shake the foundations of hell. Hallelujah. All right, God is good. I I'm telling you, this is tonight. Tomorrow night's going to get better. Thursday night's even, I mean, Friday night's going to get better. Sunday morning, we're just going to blow the top roof off. They might have to call the fire department with the fire's going to be in here. What's going on? Man, you got an earthquake and then you got a fire and that percenter's right underneath the church. I know. But we want to see God touch your family. Give you purpose. Some of you guys need to get your joy back, your peace back, your excitement to live back. And it's your one commitment away to finally sell out 100% to live for God. And if you do this, I'm the decent to say, man, it'll wreck your life. And it, it will it'll change your life forever. I love God. I, I, I tell you, I mean, on Tuesday nights, we were here last night. I was, last, I was here last night till 1130 praying for people, helping them get set free from the power of the devil. And people giving testimonies, man. A week ago, I was suicidal. A week ago, I, was, I, I, I had no reason to live. A week later, my life has totally been transformed. I got set free from demonic oppression, from depression, anxiety. Those demons were cast out of me. I am now a brand new person. And now I can't keep my mouth shut. I got to tell everybody what God has done for me. We're talking about a week later. And I'm talking about a day later, a moment later. This could be your moment. It's up to you. So we're, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the word of the year. It's, it's, and the word of the year, this is the year of the harvest. And, and we're believing that this year is going to be the year that we're going to see more people, even closest to us, our family members, our friends, our associates, people that you've been talking to for years and they look like they weren't even listening. God's going to bring them all in. You know, you know what I, I, have you ever seen, have you ever seen, the, that you, I don't know if it's YouTube or whatever, but they, they have this boat and they're just like in some, I don't know if it's a river or something, and the, sh the, the fish are jumping out. They're jumping out, bam, 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 they're landing in the boat and they're not even fishing and they're catching big fish like this. That's what's happening right now. Come on, prophetically in the spirit realm. People are done with their lifestyles. They said, I'm done, I'm empty, I tried everything. God, come on. Somebody just tell me about Jesus. Just pass by me. Give me a hint. I'll jump in. How many believe that's what's going to happen this year in your life? So, we're going to pray and then we'll get into a word. We're going to read, read a few scriptures. And um, we're going to talk about a, a man that got a harvest in an unlikely season. And it, it made no sense that he would have a harvest in the season he, he was in because there was a famine. Um, that means nobody was getting a harvest, but this guy was. And, and not only did he, did he get a harvest, he got a harvest that was unheard of. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. It was a supernatural harvest. And, and understand we're starting to see it already. There, there, I, I just want to say hi to everybody in our, right now there's people in our cafe right now. The overflow is full over here at, at South Hall. The overflow is full at the North Hall. I mean, we're just, we're, we're full. But this, I said it at the beginning of the year, this building is not going to be big enough for what God is ready to do. I said it. It's, it's not. You're going to have to come here early. And this is going to be better than some concerts. You're going to have to come here early. We had families here at 12 o'clock trying to get in. Imagine that people are, are this is not Black Friday. 
but there's something they want. It's, man, I got to get into the house of God tonight. Come on. If you're in the overflow, I'm proud of you. You could have gotten home, but you're saying it doesn't matter. I'm in, I'm under the roof. I'm in the house. And just so you know, if you're in the overflow or you're online, the same Holy Spirit that's here is there. God's everywhere. He's um, come on, he's omnipresent. Let's thank the Lord that he's going to do breakthroughs in the foyer over there and the so let's let's pray father we just thank you for your word thank you for your presence thank you for this season in our lives we thank you for this moment we ask the lord speak to us that we may receive an impartation tonight on how to really get that harvest that you're you've promised us in the name of jesus we pray amen you may be seated so let's turn to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. I won't be long, but let's get into the scripture and learn what God has for us. This is what it says. A severe famine now struck the land as it happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerar where Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, lived. So he, there's a famine and, and in the land. And it's interesting, his father went through a similar famine as well. And this is, when you give your life to Jesus, God does not promise you that you won't have some difficulties, challenges in life. But he does promise you that those difficulties will not overpower you. So there was a famine in the land. Um, and, you, and the question we're going to be asking, how do we prepare to gather a great harvest. How do we put ourselves in a position to see God use us to save a lot of souls and see the results that God wants for us to have? Well, one of the things is you can't settle for a famine when God is promising you a harvest. So there was a famine in the land. And you know what that meant? That there was people starving to death. They were impoverished. There was no food. And you know what was happening? The majority of the people were staying right where they were at. They were beginning to settle for the famine, the extreme scarcity of food, the starvation, and, a, and the drought, the misery, the poverty, the want, the destitution. Do you know it's possible for us to become comfortable with our lack and then just start justifying that our lack is normal? It's not okay to be in a place where you're not growing. It's not okay for you to be in a place where there's no fire. It's not okay to be in a place that you and your family are dying. Be careful that you're not loyal to your famine. There has to be somebody that said, I we stay another place, day in this place. If we stay another day in this location, if we stay another day in this ministry that I'm in, that no one's getting saved and no one's getting delivered and no, no, one, no one's experiencing the power of God, I can't stay here another day because if I stay here another day, me and my family are going to die. Is there anybody that says, I got to make a move? And the reason God is having some of us make moves right now you don't even know how you got in this building and how you got in this place. But God is saying there's a mighty harvest coming and I'm right now organizing my harvesters to get in position for the harvest. There's somebody here that's sick and tired of living the way they've been living and they're saying, no longer am I going to stay here in on, famished, starving, dying in poverty. So Abraham, Isaac makes a move. So why did he make a move? Because I, I'm not staying here. Don't get used to your addiction. Don't get used to your depression. Don't get you, come on, don't get used to your comfort zone. Don't get used to, don't, don't get used to it. What's normal? Everybody else is living like this. That's not, it, stop trying to be normal. Stop trying to be average. Stop trying to gauge your life by your friends that are failing. Well, I'm doing a little better than failure. So what? You were not created to do a little better than failure. You were not created to survive. You were created to thrive. You were created to be victorious. You were created to do some great things. Give God some praise if you believe you were created to do something bigger than you've ever done. Don't settle for the famine. So Isaac took some action. He moved towards provision. The Bible says, so Isaac moved. Now, when he was moving, he was moving south towards Egypt. And the reason he was moving towards Egypt because when his father... 
years before ran into a famine, he, his father went to Egypt to get provision. So what he was doing was doing the best he could with the knowledge he had. And this is all you got to do is do the best you can with the knowledge you have. And God will meet you in your transition. But stop expecting for God to move and you're not willing to move. There has to be a time that you take some steps in a, and just say, I, I know this. I'm not staying here. I got to move. I'm not staying in this addiction. I'm not staying in this abuse. I'm not, come on, I'm not staying in this failure. I'm not staying in this rut. I'm not staying, I'm not staying in this cycle of destruction. Something has to happen. I'm making a move. And some of you tonight, even online, you're making a move. And this is what happened. You showed up to the house of God and God's presence is meeting you because you made the move that you know how to make. Just do what you can. So while he did what he could, he made a move and he's walking towards Egypt. He gets to Gerar, and this is what happens in verse 2. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go to, down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. Now, this is a very important thing. If you're going to see a big harvest in your life, well, number one, you got to don't settle for a famine when God's promising you to a harvest. It's never God's will for you to starve to death. It's never God's will for you to be impoverished for the rest of your life. Don't accept it. So now the other thing, if you're going to start seeing God do something in your life, you're going to have to start doing exactly what God tells you to do because every harvest comes with instructions. Don't expect to get the results that God wants to give you if he gives you instructions and you don't follow it. We're not hearers of the word only, we're doers of the word. So now he makes action, does action. He goes, I know this, I ain't staying here and dying, I'm moving. So he makes a move in the right direction. And what happens while he makes that move, this God appears to Isaac. He speaks to him. And he begins to give him direction. He says, this is what I want you to do. Do not go to Egypt. Do as I tell you. Do as I tell you. Just do as I tell you. And if you do as I tell you, you're going to get the harvest I'm, plant I'm promising you. If you do as I tell you, you'll get the harvest I'm promising you. God has some promises, but they also have instructions. And if you do what God tells you, you'll get the promises that God has promised you. So now, he says, live here. Don't, you don't have to move. Stay right here. Now, there's another group that, got, that you're fidgety and you're thinking if you move, it'll be better. The other, there's another group that you're in a fruitful place, but the devil wants to get you out of position. So now you got to be careful. I'm warning the group that's comfortable in their famine. And then I'm warning the group that doesn't understand that God has planted you in the right place. And if you make a move, you're going to be out of God's will. And even though you have a plan, God, you have a dream and God's giving you a vision, this is what God's telling you. Unless you do exactly what I'm telling you do, you won't see it happen. You guys understand that? This stuff is precise. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And that's why it's important to have leadership in your life, mentors in your life. Stop trying to make moves with no counsel and advice. Stop trying to be a prophet with no prophet over you. No one's supposed to be a prophet without a submitting to a prophet. Even if you got a word, you got to check your word before, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And I guarantee you this, if you bring your word up to your pastor and then you bring it up to your mama that's a prayer warrior and then you give it and, you, and you, then you bring it up to your DG leader, your small group leader, and none of them are agreeing with your word. It's not the devil in them, it's the devil in you. There's a spirit of rebellion that's starting to rise, rise up in you and what it wants to do is destroy you and he knows that as long as you stay connected to the church, you're not vulnerable to that, come on, to that fake lion. He's seeking whom he may devour, but he doesn't devour the pack. He devours those that separate from the pack. So don't do a move that God is not confirming with your leadership. Well, they don't know what I'm, what I'm feeling. No, they know what you're feeling. As a matter of fact, they're in a higher position than you because they have more experience than you. I want to do whatever I want to do. See, that's your problem. You want to do whatever you want to do. As long as you want to do whatever you want to do, you're not doing God's will. 
Do you know doing God's will is not always easy because you have to die to your will? Are we going to get this harvest or not? Come on. This harvest is going to come with some t- difficult instructions. There are going to be things that you don't want to do, but you're going to have to do it. Ain't nobody want to go on hard ground with no rain and, 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 get, and start hammering that ground. It's a famine. You know what that means? It's a drought. Who wants to go out there in the heat with no rain, with cement-like dirt? And, 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 and get a pickaxe. I don't know what they had in those days. And just start hitting that ground with no water. With no water. And no one's doing it. See, you got to be careful that you're so busy trying to fit in, you can't fulfill your purpose. Just because no one's doing it doesn't mean we're not supposed to do it. Doesn't mean you're not supposed to do it. See, we don't move by seasons. We move by the word. Because God's word can change a season. Are you still with me? So, God told him, you don't have to go to Egypt. Now, be careful that God tells you not to go to Egypt and you still want to go. Egypt represents, what does Egypt represent? Egypt represents your comfort zones. What's familiar. Going backwards. Some of you guys have fantasies to go back where God delivered you from. And, and some of it, understand, it's not necessarily bad stuff. It's just played out stuff. It has nothing to do with your future. Where, see, where you want to go might be good for somebody else. It just ain't good for you. That's like you graduating into high school. Come on, graduate from high school, and now you're going to a university, and you want to go back to high school. Now, high school's good for people that are in high school, but it's not good for people that already graduated. So you got to be careful that God graduated from something and you want to go back to what the thing that God already graduated you from. And you got fantasies to go back because it's easier and you don't have to learn nothing. But I feel comfortable here. That, is that Egypt? Egypt. Egypto in Spanish. Come on, we got to get rid of that Egypt mentality. Come on, you got to get rid of that Egypt mentality. You got to stop fantasizing about getting high just one more time. You got to stop fantasizing of getting together with that ex that was never good then, ain't going to be good now. And God is saying, she's not your deliverer. He's not your deliverer. Your future. Come on, I got a plan for you. I got a harvest and it's in front of you, not behind you. Come on, is anybody receiving a word right now? Come on, online. Time to go forward. So the Bible says, I love it, live here in the foreigner land. You know what it means? Live in a place that has nothing to do with your comfort zone. You don't even know their language. But right now I'm preparing you for your future. I'm going to teach you new language. I'm going to teach you new culture. Because where I'm taking you right now, preparing you for do some great things, greater things that you've ever done. Come on, God's just gonna, not going to reach your hood. He, he, he might want to reach a new nation. Amen. Come on, are you guys ready? Live here. Look at this. And I will, I will be with you and bless you. This is what God was saying. If you just do what I tell you to do, this is what I'm going to, this is my, my promise. I'll be with you. And if I'm with you, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bless you. You know what God is saying? Everybody's starving, but not you. Because nobody that's with me starves. There's, see, people are dying, but you ain't going to die. Your family is not going to die. And I'll tell you why. Because you, I'm with you, and I promise you, I will bless you. Right now, I'm telling you there's a famine across America. 
Right now, we're starving for leadership. We're starving for meaning. meaning. We're starving for freedom. We're starving for identity. We don't know who we are anymore. But there's a group of people in this dark, come on, in this dark season that God is going to say, I'm ready to bless you that they will know that you're with me. And they'll become jealous of what I'm doing in your life. And then you could tell them, you don't have to get jealous because what God did for me, he could also do for you. I'll spread it. I'll give it. I wish I could be like them. Stop it. God doesn't want you like them. He wants to make, make you like you're, you're supposed to be. You're amazing. You have a call on your life. Just follow instructions. And if you follow instructions, this is cool. God promises, I will be with you. And I will bless you. So Isaac, no need to be scared anymore. Because I'm bigger than the famine, I love, I love this statement. I'm ready to say God's promises are bigger than your problems. God is saying, just follow me. You're going to be fine. I will make sure that everything lines up. So now he begins to tell him, live here, foreigner. I'll be with you and bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands and your descendants. Now, now he starts now breaking down some, some, promise, some promises, three promises, and three harvests. So harvest number one, he goes, I promise you to give you lands, a harvest of lands. Now, I, I want you to get this, that there's, you need properties and you need land, even physical land, to do ministry in. And what God is saying, when I've called you to do something, for me, whether it's a business for me or a school for me or a church for me, I know sometimes you think, can I, can I get the land? Because land is so expensive. And God is saying, when you follow me, any land that you need to do ministry on or any land you need to do business on, I'll make sure that I get that land to you because it's part of your inheritance. Does anybody need a transfer of property your way? I love it. So you know what I'm looking for? Land. The first land I'm looking at is that parking lot across the street. Parking lot. We're coming after you. Jesus, come on. The word of God says all I got to do is follow instructions. And right now, I'm speaking to that land. And I'm saying you must be transferred to the way. That parking lot is ours. Come on. Give God some praise. You got to say it. Now you got to speak it in your life. And then you got to take action. I, when I read this scripture, I called Armando up. I go, Armando. I go, call the real estate agent up. I want to meet with him next week after impartation. Why you want to meet with him? I want to meet with him because that's our property. But, but, but it costs $17 million. That's what they said. I don't care what it costs. Right now we need to talk about it and start talking about transfer. Because I want you to understand, we might not have $17 million right now, but if God wants to transfer that property, it'll be transferred one way or the other. Some of you guys need $17 million of favor. You might not have it, but God can make a way where there's no way if there's just somebody that will do his will and obey him. We need, to, we need another property. We need The way LA needs a church. We might as well say it right now. We just looked at a property last week, $9 million in L.A., very expensive. I don't care. I'm, meeting, I'm, meeting, I'm going to meet with their pastors from that church pretty soon. With them probably next week again. I'm meeting with some people. Why? We need some land. Why? Because we're going to use it to save souls. Come on. We're going to use it to bring in the harvest. We're going to use it to deliver people. Those are going to be hot. Come on. Churches of deliverance and freedom where people are going to meet up with God and receive eternal life. Jesus, we receive your promise. We believe your word. We're taking action. The second promise, second harvest, a harvest of a multitude of spiritual and natural descendants. This is what it says. Live here in the foreign land. I hereby confirm, this sounds like a judge, right? I hereby confirm that I will give you all these lands. I, I love this. It sounds like the real estate has been transferred to you and your descendants. 
just as I solemnly promised Abraham, your father. You see how I bless your father? I'm going to bless you. Because this is what God is saying. This blessing isn't just for one generation. God is saying this is multi-generational blessing. Come on, we're going to end this, this spirit that it ends with one generation. See, the problem with American Christians, we didn't pass our faith on to the next generation. And God says, I'm declaring your faith, your blessings, your business, come on, your anointing, your ministries will no longer be left dead. When you're dead, you're going to transfer the fire to your children. Is there anybody that say, yes, I'm ready to make that transfer. My kids are going to do more than I've ever done. And God is saying, stop looking at their condition now and start looking at the promise because my promise is bigger than your problem. Well, I don't see how it's going to happen. I don't, I don't see it. You better start seeing it. There's an impartation right now of faith. Come on, we didn't come this far with weak faith. We've come this far because when God says something, we obey him and do what he says. And when God said, come on, go look at this building, and we had no money in the bank account, we still came and looked at the building and met with the, met with the owner with no money. But now we're talking about five years later, this house is full of people receiving Jesus, being discipled because we received the promise. I will cause... Look at this. I will cause. Who's going to cause it? God. I will cause. I'm going to cause it. I'll be the cause of the earthquake. I'll be the cause of the change. I'll be the cause of the salvation. I'll be the cause of the growth. I'll be the cause of the breakthrough. I'll be the cause of the victory. I'll be the cause of the healing. I'll be the cause of the restoration. I'll be the cause of the turnaround. I'll be the cause. Come on. I'll be the cause of everything that you're looking for. I'm going to be the cause. I'm going to be your blessing. And God says, you're not going to be the cause because if you're the cause, you'll take credit for it. And, and some of you have been trying real hard, but you still got no breakthrough. And I'll tell you why. God's not allowing you for a breakthrough. He said, are you done yet? Why don't you tag me in? You are, you see, you're supposed to be with me, and then I'm supposed to bless you, and then you're supposed to come to church and glorify me everywhere you go. Is there anybody here thankful that God did something that you couldn't do? I'll be the cause. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky. And he says it again. And I will give them all these lands, all these territories. Everything you conquer is not just going to stop with you. You're going to be conquering spiritual territory. Come on. You're going to be conquering physical territory. You're going get to some, get some victories. And I'm going to bless you, but it's going to be a generational blessing. It's not going to stop with you. We're going to go ahead and pass it on to the next generation. Come on. And when we pass it on to the next generation, they're going to be a bigger blessing than you ever could be. Because the next generation is not going to be starting over. The next generation is going to be working off the shoulders of the past generation. We're going to get rid of an orphan spirit. I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus, orphan spirit, orphan spirit. What is that? An orphan spirit, this is what it is. It makes you feel like if you're getting the inheritance of the past generation, you're cheating. And what it does, it makes you want to be independent. I want to do it on my own. And you do it on your own without taking the blessing of the past. See, the devil wants to disconnect you from your inheritance. He wants to disconnect you from your impartation. He wants to disconnect you from the land. He wants to disconnect you from the wisdom. And that's why there's some people, they can't go to one church. They have to go to all kinds of churches because they're not used to having a home. They're orphans. They can't have a father. They can't have a mother. They can't get inheritance. I feel guilty doing that. I'm going to pave my own way. And I'm telling you, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Come on. The Jews don't live that way. 
they give their, that's why they're so rich. It's not one generational wealth, it's multi-generational wealth. And they could tell you how far their line has gone. They're turning over businesses. They're turning over millions. They're turning over wisdom. They're turning over education. And God is saying, I meant it. I, I, I put the sentence on there because we need to start thinking biblical. We need to stop thinking independent. And we got to start saying, nah, it's not just mine. You got to value what inheritance, come on, your fathers and your mothers and your forefathers, even in ministry have, because God is saying, look what is, what's there. It's yours if you take ownership. Amen. You guys got that? I will cause your descendants to become as numerous. Now, now, when he talks about this harvest, when God talks, he don't talk small. He just said, it's going to be as big as, as a farmer with 20 cows. He don't say that. Because, he, because I'll tell you why. Because when God speaks, he speaks no limits. And he speaks no limits because he wants you to start, stop having a limited mentality. He wants you to think like him. Stop thinking normal. Stop thinking, come on, stop looking at your, your abilities or your disabilities and think that's your limit. Your limit is not your abilities. Your limit is not your education. Your limit, come on, your limit is not your bank account. Your limit is God. And if God's your limit, there is no limit. Give God a little praise. Come on, let's break. Come on, let's raise the roof. Let's raise the roof of our thinking. It's going to be as numerous, as numerous as the stars. That's the harvest I'm bringing in in 2024 at the Way Rural Outreach and churches across America and the world. Are you guys ready? We're going to Africa. We're going to, we're going to be preaching to thousands and thousands of people. This building is not going to be big enough. We're going to have to start churches in L.A., churches down the street, churches in every hood in the city. I mean, in, in the United States of America, God is ready to expand a church that's willing to expand. God is saying, what I'm ready to do, you won't be able to count. But your job and my job is to believe the promise and declare it over yourself and start moving in that direction. I receive the lands, Lord, you promised. I received the descendants of souls being saved, spiritual sons, my daughters. And that, that harvest of spiritual descendants is going to begin with my kids. And it's going to begin with my husband. And it's going to begin with my wife. And it's going to begin with my relatives. And it's going to begin with my close friends. And it's going to begin with anybody I have contact with. Now you need to start expecting for a harvest. Because if God is, come on, if he's promising you your harvest, you need to start expecting people to say, yes, I'll go to church. Yes, I'll join your Bible study. Come on. Yes, yes, I want to receive Jesus. But I know this if you don't ask nobody nobody's gonna get safe and the reason we don't ask we don't believe they want they don't, we don't believe they want it we need to start opening to our mouths man some of you guys used to be really good at inviting people to parties but you're really bad at inviting people to know Jesus hey man we're gonna have a great party man it's gonna be some cakes there you know that girl that you know that girl that girl she gonna be there I tell you she was asking for you You, you'll promote the devil, but you have a hard time promoting God. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't believe people want God. You, you believe people want to get high. You believe they want to get drunk. You believe, you, you believe they want to sin. And I can understand why you believe that. But I'm telling you, I, they've already tried all that stuff. And they're saying, well, anybody let me know. I'm empty right now. I've been used by men. Come on. I feel broken hearted. I've tried every drug there is. I'm still empty. Is there anybody will let them know that there's an answer for you? What he did for me, he can do for you. Generational harvest. I'll give it to you. And then I will cause you to sense to become as numerous as the stars in the sky. Promise number three, harvest. I will give them all these lands. And through your descendants, and through your descendants. You know what I, I think? We're expecting too little from this generation. And because we're expecting little, we're getting little. You got to be careful that you're not talking to this generation based on some of their faults or shortcomings. Because that's what they said about you and your generation. The last generation is not supposed to judge the, 
the, the, the, the, genera- the now generation, the last generation is supposed to lift up the now generation. You didn't like it when they put you down. So why don't you just go ahead and say, no, no, you're in this season, in this life, in this, in this time. Jesus is coming back and you're an you're end time, come on, you're an end time warrior. You're an end time harvester. God has a plan over your life. How do you expect to get great men and women of God if you're not speaking great words into them? I'm telling you, you want to know the reality? These teenagers now are more on fire than you were when you were in team. These kids are on, look at these two kids who are up here. These guys ain't faking it. They don't have a mother. They don't have a father. But they have a father in heaven. They've had an encounter with God. And what they're saying, don't you underestimate who I am. I might be 15 years old, but I'm 15 years old with the fire of God in me. And I believe that God has called Hallelujah! All the way from the back, all the way to overflow in the cafe, online. Let's give God some praise because God's ready to do something now in this next generation. I will give them all these lands and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. What? Do you know what's called a harvest of generational blessing that will bless the entire world through the next generation? We've done a lot of great things in my generation. But next generation, God wants you to do greater things. Because you're not starting from scratch. Your job right now is to be Elisha following Elijah. Because Elisha says, I want a double portion. And then Elijah said, okay, if you want a double portion, you ask for a difficult thing. So you want double what I got? That's right. It's a right prayer because you should be doing more than I did. But what you're asking for is a difficult thing. And it's a difficult thing because the way you, to get that kind of anointing, you're going to have to follow tighter than you're following. Some of you guys are following a YouTuber greater than you're following, come on, your leaders that, that have your inheritance. Some of you guys respect a stranger more than respect your father. And he's the one that has your inheritance. And the devil knows if you could dishonor your fathers and dishonor your mothers, you won't get their inheritance. Their inheritance will go to somebody else. I'm talking spiritually. You guys understand this, right? It's not just physical. I'm not. It's spiritual. And I understand this. If you don't have a church home and you don't have spiritual fathers and mothers over your life, I'll tell you this. You have no inheritance. You better get grounded. Amen. Come on. So he goes, you ask for difficulty. He goes, okay, this is what you got to do. If you see me go when I go, because Elijah was crazy. Elijah didn't die. God took him in a fiery chariot. It was crazy. But God told him he was going to take him. Imagine, telling, uh, imagine me telling you, like, guys, I don't know when, but I got it. I, God gave me a vision. I'm not going to die. I'm going to, like a fire chair from heaven is going to come. And God's just going to, I'm going to go in. He's going to take me. He said, Pastor, you're going cuckoo. Maybe a lot of people thought Elijah was cuckoo. But Elijah, Elijah said, well, if you're going... Who's going to have your mantle? Because are you just going to leave it here? He goes, well, I, I could leave it here. He goes, but do you, you want it? You want it? He goes, yeah, I want double what you got, though. You did a lot of miracles, but I want to do more than you've ever done. He goes, yeah, for a difficult thing. So if you see me leave, you got it. So you're going to have to watch me like a hawk, not take your eyes off of me. You barely could sleep. You got to sleep with one eye open because I don't know when God's taking me. But if you watch me like that, you could have what I got. And the Bible says when Elijah was taken, Elisha was waiting. He grabbed the mantle. And the Bible says that he did twice as many miracles as Elijah. 
And we'll end it with this. Harvest. We're going to one scripture that's amazing. Now, if you're going to get a harvest, the last thing, you're going to have to plant some seeds. Don't expect to see people get saved and you don't open your mouth and tell them about Jesus. If you're believing that this harvest season, you're going to have to talk a lot this year about Jesus. You're going to have to plant financial seeds. If you want to return, you're going to have to plant, you're going to have to plant time seeds, good deeds in people's lives, speak the gospel, have a Bible study in your home. Matter of fact, in your home, you need to start planting some seeds if you want to break through in a harvest in your own home. Stop letting YouTube take over your home, Netflix take over your home, Spectrum take over your home, football take over your home. And God is saying, all that stuff are words and their spirits attached to it. When was the last time you had a Bible study in your home? And this is it. This is a great scripture. This is it. And that, in Genesis 26, when Isaac planted his crops, what did Isaac do? When did he plant his crops? He planted his crops that year. The year what? The year of famine. No one was planting crops because there was no rain. So, and you know what people are doing with their seed? They weren't planting it. They were eating it. And the reason they were eating it because it was their last substance, substance they had. That's all they had. So they said, if we plant it, we're probably going to lose it. So we might as eat it and hope that there's rain and this famine stops. So you got to be careful that you're not eating when you should be planting. There's a time right now you're supposed to be planting. This is a season. Look what he does. His, he planted his crops that year. He planted crops what? The year of the harvest. He harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord blessed him. He became very, a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats and herds and cow, cattle and servants. And the, the Philistines became jealous of him. So the Philistines filled up Isaac's wells with dirt. These were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father. Finally, the king of Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too powerful for us. <laughs> That's crazy. So now, we're ending with this. He's planting seed and there hasn't been rain. So there's only two ways that you could have a hundredfold return. Now, if you had an investment that had 2x return, that means you'd invest and you'd get twice as much as you invested, that would be an amazing investment. But to get an investment that has a 100x return, it's crazy. It's just epic. If you had one of those in your lifetime, you'd be super rich. Well, God is saying this is the year of the harvest, so expect, expect 100x. Expect the biggest harvest you've ever seen. So now for him to get a harvest, just check this out. It would have had to rain, one, one, one thing, but it would rain just over Isaac's field and no one else would get rain. Or the second way he would get rain, water is that God would show him where to dig to get water. Like there was water that's flowing rivers underneath the earth. And God would tell him where to dig. But either way, it would be supernatural because nobody had the water. But Isaac had the water. And by the time he was done, he had this amazing harvest. And you know what he had? He had what everybody else needed. So therefore, he became very rich. God's ready to do something in this season. That God's going to, this is where he's going to, he's going to bless you to the point. That the world and the church is going to be, the, the, the church and you are going to be so blessed in your relationship with God. They're going to start getting jealous. And they, they might even start coming against you. But they can't stop this. Because it wasn't them. They might even try to shut doors on you and say, we don't want to do business with you anymore. And say, you could do whatever you want, but you can't stop this. Because the idea, my blessing didn't come from you. My blessing came from God. And he's the one that's blessing me. And if you don't bless me, God will get somebody else to bless me. And God is telling somebody right now, stop getting freaked out. And put your, come on, your faith back in the promises of God. Because what God promises to be with you and bless you, you're going to get a harvest and rain and everything you need to accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Let's give God some praise in this building. Let's all stand up.
Tomorrow, I'm going to dismiss in just a second, but don't want to leave yet. I'm telling you. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Don't settle for famine when God's promising you a harvest. Number two, just do what I tell you to do, God says, and I'll be with you and I'll bless you. I'll give you harvests that make no sense, breakthroughs that make no sense, turnarounds that make no sense. And they will know it was God with you. All right? And number three, just plant some seeds. Expect a harvest. Tell people about Jesus. Tomorrow night's going to be awesome. But before we leave this place, the greatest thing you could ever do is give your life to Jesus. I want to do one prayer first before we do that. And I want to pray for the next generation. I want to pray for your children. I want to pray for your young adults. We're going to pray for them because God has promised you a harvest that's going to begin in your house. You got to start getting excited right now that this is the year of the harvest. My sons, my daughters are coming to Jesus. They're going to be set free. And they're going to, be, they're going to actually be so on fire that they're going to get to church before I get to church. How many believe in that right now? Okay, repeat after me, parents. Come on, repeat after me. We're praying for the next generation. Say, Jesus, we believe your word that this is a year of the harvest. I proclaim, I declare your promise over my life. Your word says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That means my children. That means my husband my wife, my relatives. I thank you, Lord. They're all coming. I'm passing on my faith, my fire, my relationship with God, my inheritance to the next generation. They will not be disconnected from me. Bring them back to the borders. Let me have favor with them again. Your word says that in last days, you'll pour your spirit upon all flesh touch my sons touch my daughters touch my family save them i receive the harvest now i thank you for it now i declare it now all my family will be saved filled with the spirit born again and be on fire for you in jesus name amen let's celebrate if you believe that come on you won't have to worry about them they're going to get so saved you won't have to worry about them Number two, the greatest thing you could ever do is just give your life to Jesus. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's been a lot of talk today. But God is saying to every one of us, say, guys, it's time. Everything you're looking for is in this relationship with Jesus. Do an exchange right now. Give your life to Jesus. Why do another cycle of the misery, of the pain, of the emptiness. Today's your day to experience fullness of life, abundant life. And all you have to do, I, I, I was talking to some guy that was towing my car, he had a flat tire a few weeks ago, and I told him, you know, giving your life to Jesus is simple as this. You give him all your bad, and he gives you all his good. That's it. You give him all your bad, he gives you all his good. Now you got to be willing to give up your bad. You got to be willing to give up your sin. So I'm done. I'm done doing it my way. Because if you're not willing to give up your bad, you can't get all of his good. There has to be an exchange. But if you're tired and you say, man, I want to be saved. I'm going to ask a simple question. If today were your last day on earth, do you know where you spend eternity? I want you to enjoy the rest of these nights. I want you to party with us, but I'm telling you, you got to get God's spirit in you. When God's spirit invades you, he makes you into a new person. He'll set you free. He'll give you new desires. You come the way you are. Now, you don't fix your life and come to Jesus. You come to Jesus, he fixes your life. Are you ready for the greatest year of your life? Are you ready for a turnaround? Are you ready for change? You want change? Let God change you. One, if you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure if I'm going to die right now. I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure I'm forgiven of my sins. 
I'm ready, I'm ready right now to turn from my sin. I'm ready to call on Jesus to save me. I want to be saved. I want to become a brand new person. I want to be forgiven. I want a new life. I want to know if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. I want to receive the gift of eternal life. If you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to get right with God. I want to be forgiven of my sins. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. This is the first night of impartation. Everybody here is going to celebrate your decision. Don't you worry about it. What are they going to think? Everybody here is going to think you're awesome. One, when I count to three, just say, raise your hand. Say, I want to be forgiven. I want to be set free. Or I need to recommit my life to the Lord. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand over there. I see the hand. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you over there. Anybody else on this side over here? I want those to raise their hands. I want you to leave your seat and do me one book favor. Just come up here. I'm just going to pray with you. There's going to be no hocus pocus. We're just going to pray with you. But I did the sign of you leaving your old life in your seats and, and starting over. Come on. If you raise your hand, come forward. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. Come on. We got the next generation coming. We just prayed for them to get saved. Look how many are coming from this generation. Well, we just prayed that they get saved. Come on. Just come. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. Come on. We got young adults up here. We got teenagers up here. You're online or you're in the, in the, in the overflow. Just go up. We'll pray with you. Just go up in the overflow. Just go up. Come on, they're still coming, church. Come on, the harvest is coming in. God said, come on, this is the year of the harvest. Come on, they're still coming. We're going to pray. I, I just want to say this. Next, next Wednesday, right? Not this Wednesday. A week from now, we're going to have mass baptism. A mass baptism. Baptism represents a major decision that you've made to turn from sin and follow Jesus. Going down in the water represents the burial of your old life. Coming out of the waters represents the resurrection of your new life that I'm following Jesus. And you're letting, it's a public declaration of a decision that you make today. Jesus got baptized to show us, even he did it. And he said, just follow me. So, um, and we're going to get you a t-shirt. That's why I have this t-shirt. We'll get you a t-shirt next week when you sign up for baptism tonight. And we'll get you a t-shirt. You get baptized next week. This place is going to be packed out. And we're going to be celebrating your decision to follow Jesus. Invite your friends, relatives. Who knows? They're going to get saved next week. Here we are. Boom. Oh, Let me have Let me have There we go. There we go. There we go. Come on. It's your day. All right. Here we go. We're going to pray right now. But I'll let you know this. We love you. God loves you. God loves you so much now. When you give, when one sinner comes to Jesus, they have a big party in heaven. A party like you've never seen a party. The angels start stopping heaven. What's your name, young man? Mondo. This is what they say. They're partying. And they're saying, Mondo went up and he gave his life to Jesus. And they're celebrating in heaven, Mondo. It's your day. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. New beginning in the name of Jesus, okay? What's your name, young man? Anthony. Anthony's up here. And he's giving his life to Jesus in heaven. They're saying, hey, Anthony, he gave his life. That's what they're doing in heaven. What's your name, honey? Michaela. Michaela. They're, in heaven, they're saying, what was the party for? Michaela, she gave her life to Jesus. All right. We're family, but you're joining an army used to be part of the army of the devil. Now you're going to be part of the army of God. And we show up. We show up to church. Next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, show up to the house of God. Come on Sunday. Grow with us, okay? Go on a Jesus run. Not a drug run. Go on a Jesus run. Not a party run. Run for Jesus. Ready? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much. 
that you came to this earth as a human being to be tempted in every way that I've been tempted, but yet you didn't fall. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to pay the price for my sins. I was guilty. You were innocent. I deserve to die, but you love me so much. You died for me. I open my heart and I ask you now, come in and make me a new person. I repent of all my sins. Forgive me. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I'm saved. I'm born again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. We're going to get some information for you. Sign up for Holy Water. Sign up for baptism. God bless you. Night number one. You haven't seen nothing yet. Tomorrow night, this place is going to be on fire. Love you guys. Remember that the God is for you. There's no one can come against you. Congratulations, every one of you. We love you so much. We pray with you.